Let the word of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Well, uh, just like many of us, that I subscribe to the weekly Christian meditations material online, especially from our denominations, from the Presbyterians, from the United Church of Christ, and also from the Methodists. And I read them as much as I can every week. But this week, I receive from the Presbyterian Outlook. This week, the newsletter had a very interesting beginning. I can read uh, the first paragraph to all of us. Dear readers, <laughs> a lot is going on in this world right now. The Southeast is still assessing the tragic damage of Hurricane Helen. The Near East is in lots of violence. Sudan is on the brink of famine. The United States stands in front of a decision that will impact our democracy. Protests everywhere. Watching or listening to the news can feel overwhelming. Where am I to spend my time and energy? How will I have enough capacity to receive more news? However, bad news is coming, isn't it? The suffering of people all around the world. And we might ask, what have they done? What caused those disasters? When looking at them, we might ask ourselves, what have I done wrong? I do not deserve this, do I? When looking at ourselves. Today is the World Communion Sunday. This tradition began in 1933 at Shadyside Presbyterian Church in Pittsburgh. This purpose of the World Communion Sunday is to try to connect the churches all around the world, not only in one region or in one denomination, but across the globe to connect each other. The World Communion Sunday started right in between the World War II. The Christians, especially from the United States, sense a urge or feeling, how can we really take good care of each other? At that time, at the beginning, our country did not participate in this world. But how can we do more than that to take good care of each other? So we have World Communion Sunday. We try to connect to each other especially the churches who are suffering from different things. The word of Communion Sunday become broadly accepted actually right after the World War II. The more church joined the first Sunday in October, we will host the communion together. And today we also learn from each other how your church do the communion how you remember the day that uh, our Savior sacrificed his life for us, what kind of suffering or problems your church is dealing with, how can we die together and resurrect together in Christ. So I reach out to some of us in our congregation to know what does your church do back your home for a communion. So I reached out to Sena Rin, that uh, her house is in the, uh, southern India. And she told me her church is Presbyterian Church. So they only have three communion in one year. This is according to the constitution of, in the Presbyterian Church in India. So the minister, like us, will bless the bread and the grape juice. And the, uh, the church will invite those baptized member to come forward. And the minister will pass the, the element to the ordained people, maybe the deacon, to pass out the, uh, the communion to the people. Only the baptized people, they are welcome to join the table. This is the uh, Presbyterian Church in South India. So I also reached out to Maxim, um, his hometown in Ukraine, and he grew up in a Pentecost church. And the pastor will 
blessed and passed the Jews and the crackers to everyone in the sanctuary. And people will drink and eat the, the cracker together. But the Orthodox Church uh, in Ukraine is different. People will light, in, light up and do the confessions before the service and the communion. And they will be served by the priest with a spoon mixed with bread and wine together. And people will receive it on their seats. In my experience in Taiwan, there are lots of different experiences. But what impressed me is, in one communion Sunday, the minister bring out two elements I never imagined before. The first one is sweet potato and oolong tea. And the minister explained to us, when we remember the people that use their daily bread, what the daily bread means for the Taiwanese people, everyone can afford it. There might be a sweet potatoes that you don't need to purchase, you can just dig out from your garden, then we can have that as our bread. So it's bread for people who are in labor, but we can share sweet potato. It's our daily bread. But how about oolong tea? In Taiwan, the people will serve the free tea on the street. For the people who are walking on the street, they are thirsty, they can pour out the oolong tea and drink it. They can feel refreshed again. So this is our grape juice. This is the wine we're supposed to use in Taiwan. So last Sunday, we have sweet potatoes break and oolong tea we drank together. But the Presbyterian Church in Taiwan has a very interesting and problematic regulations. The communion is also a kind of tool to monitor all the members. So some members, although they are baptized, they are not allowed to receive a communion for certain reasons. That really troubles me. The second reading today is from the book of Mark. Even Jesus welcomed the children and blessed them. How come a member of the church, they are not allowed to join the communion? They are very troublesome for me. So lots of questions continued. Who can receive a communion? Who can pass the communion? Who can conduct the communion? What kind of material we should use for the body and the blood? What's the meaning of the elements? And who would deal with the leftovers? After a long time of debate, one of our denomination, Presbyterian Church in the United States, adopt the idea that the children, they are welcome to join the table with the appropriate explanation of the meaning of the element they are going to receive. And today, also the first time, after the general conference of the Medata Church this year, all the Medata Church together will join the table together for the first time. After we adopt the most important resolution to accept and welcome our LGBT people in our table, attend the table together. Before that, people identify themselves as LGBT people. They are not allowed or welcome to join the table together. But this year, today, for the first time, everyone will come to join the table. United Church of Christ adopt the open communion policy that anyone, no matter where in their journey, they are all welcome to join the table together. It's quite different journey, but we work together to join the table. And today, Reverend Paul will conduct a communion together, and we will join that in person and online. Back to the scripture today, Book of Job, that um, Reverend Anna Grace just mentioned, that this book might not be her favorite. And Paul mentioned to me this morning, saying that, oh, this book is a book with the most joys, isn't it? So the first two chapters, we know what's going on to Job. And this, the scholar had a problem to identify 
the time of this book or what are the sources of this book. And after lots of researches, it turned out this book collects the material from the 18th century BCE to the 6th century BCE across more than 1,000 years. The material from the East, Near East to Egypt, even to Africa, all around the world, everywhere the Israelites have traveled, the story was collected in the Book of Job. The Book of Job was treated as the Book of Wisdom for the people to help them to encounter all the crises they are facing. The Book of Job may not give us the right answer, but there are more questions asked in this book. For scum scholars, that they will say, oh, Book of Job, Job represents our Savior, Jesus Christ, an innocent person who suffered a lot for our sin. For some scholars, especially the Jewish scholars, the rabbis, they have more complicated understanding. Some rabbi will say, will told you, oh, Job is not one of us. He is not a Jewish people at all. For some rabbi will told you, oh, it's the most wonderful Israelites, Jewish people we never know. Some will say, ah, oh, this image is so problematic. Is Job really to honor God or he worship God out of fear? Different people have different understanding and interpretations, especially for the Christians. There are several characters in this book. We have God, the, div the divine. We have the heavenly belonging and assemblings. It seems the angels around, around there. But the angels did not do anything, right, for Job. When Job suffered from lots of pain, those angels do nothing. And here come the Satan, accusers, that he can do anything to Job under permission from God. And I do not understand how could it be possible for us. It's hard to comprehend. This is a prologue of the book of Job. The second reading today is from the book of Mark, Gospel of Mark. In ancient world, reflects here, man is the head of the household, and the woman, his wife, is a property of a man. And the scripture here also introduced the idea of adultery, adulteries. Adultery is a man who has sex with another man's wife, a property. The behavior was seen as a violation of another man's property and another man's honor, not, nothing else, because it violates another man's property and, and honor. And only a man can divorce a woman. This is the society and the scripture reflect. But for some feminist theologians, they interpret this scripture quite differently. They say in this teaching here, it tries to align men and women. They will be equal together. So not only men can divorce a woman, but the woman can divorce a man. So we are equal. We, our power now is balanced. From this uh, relational theolo uh, theology, we also can understand the second half of the reading today about the children. The children is a powerless being, but a doubt is full of power. But Jesus told the disciples, let the children come here, I will bless them. Also balance the power and the powerless people among them, also among us. So the kingdom of God is a place for the powerless people, like the child we read today. We also noticed Torah or power could be abused, become a barrier for anyone, or be, anyone be treated unequally e in relationship or in our society. And we can still see lots of behavior out of hardness of heart today among us. The nature of naive, powerless children might be a key for us to understand back to the book of Job 
in our context today. We know that naiveness might be quite tricky for an adult like us. We are not a child anymore, especially our current context. Even the Presbyterian outlook reminds us it's too much, isn't it? I wonder if I can see Job after he lost everything, his property, children, all his honor, his insufferable of the illness. What can I see on his face? I wonder what can I see on those suffered but persisted with their integrity? What can I see on their faces? This week, President Jimmy Carter has his birthday. He's the first president to live up to 100 years old. And some of us are approaching there, isn't it? We have more than 90 years old here as a witness here. Keep going. <laughs> we have birthday people this week. Keep going up to 100 years old. He made them history. But he also received the hospice care for more than a year, isn't it? I saw a picture on, on the CNN. He smiles sitting in a wheelchair at his 100 years old birthday party. He smiled in a wheelchair receiving hospice care. He's still enthusiastic about the future of this country, isn't it? He said he will vote this year in the presidential elections. President Carter did not give up and experienced lots of things. He still smiled in a wheelchair. Our friend Kathy from the P-Flag Tinley Park came to the coming out story yesterday. He sh she shared her concern about her transgender son. She mentioned if her son leave Illinois to another state for work, he might be fired because he's transgender. He might not be able to receive medical care because he's transgender. Casey also shared about he worried about lots of women. They cannot receive proper treatment if they decide to go on the process of abortion. They do travel far away from their home to receive those treatment. She's worried. And she said to us, does no decision need to be made between the transgender kids, the parents, and the doctor? Does the decision need to be made by the woman who carries the children? Their lives and bodies should not be used for the political tools of the politicians. The civil rights movement is now for the transgender teens and the women. The civil rights movement never ends. When Casey said this story yesterday, I looked carefully at her face and she smiled during the story sh sharing. You may not see the President Carter's picture, or you do not know Kathy from the P-Flag, but you must know Louis Armstrong and his famous picture. He holds his trumpet right here, and he has a big smile, all his teeth showed up and his eye looking up and smiling like this. It's a wonderful picture. When you Google him, Louis Armstrong, the first picture showed up. He's smiling in the picture. Louis, Louis Armstrong was invited to perform a lot of plays in the United States. By that time, racial segregation was still in place. He played in front of the audience, but he cannot join the receptions. He need to stay in another hotel because the hotel only allowed one color of people to stay there. And with this country suffering from joining the Vietnam War, that's what people called was American War in Vietnam. 
and he also witnessed the assassination of President John Kennedy in 1963. The United States was not in a good shape at that time. And some of my questions, why Louis Armstrong holding his trumpet had a smile on his face? Was he stupid or just funny? In his house in Queens, New York City, he spent most of his time in his library alone. He recalled himself, he, ref he reflected on what's going on in, in the society and how he can he re react to those topic. He decided to use music to respond to the tragic world. And he also used the music to invite people to join him have courage to respond to this tragic world. The smiles on his face is not a sign of funny or stu to, uh, stupidity, but a sign of survival and hope. He wanted to survive under various forms of discriminations and miserable circumstances. He also want his audience to survive. The home Remind me of Louis Armstrong's trumpet, isn't it? The jazz music never on the beat, but encourage us to go forward. Book of Job is a collection of wisdom from different people, from different circumstances, who seek survival from various circumstances. They question divine justice by persisting in their integrity. Torah might be misused to form the patriarchal society, and the power of the privileged people may become a barrier for the unprivileged people. But Jesus demonstrates a new vision of the future. When we, when we the followers of Jesus Christ, the people of faith, we should also have a vision reflect on the challenge in our world, our country, our community, and the church. The stewardship is also an action for us in response to our circumstances. That vision is a kingdom of God that holds us together. I would like to conclude the message today with one of Louis Armstrong's famous songs, written by George Davis Weiss, Robert Taylor, in 1968. What a wonderful world. It's a prayer and a vision for the world was broken, in trouble, but we see the vision, we feel the hope. May we can find the peace and hope in it. What a wonderful world. I see the tree of green, ray roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I see sky of blue and clouds of white, the bright blessed day, the dark sacred night. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, are also on the faces of people going by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They are really saying, I love you. I hear babies cry. I watch them grow. They will learn much more. They will never know. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Yes, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Amen. <laughs>